Hey, everybody, it's Jacob Newton here, professional hockey player and mental health coach, advocate, all of the above. My good buddies over at Sports Epreneur and I did a podcast together about a year ago. And ever since then, we've been keeping in touch, creating content podcasts now. So if anybody out there is interested in doing the same, having their own podcast or want some type of content creation, don't hesitate to reach out to those guys at Sports Epreneur. They are willing and able to help you out. And after listening, don't hesitate in leaving a review. And then you'll get much more access to all of my content across the Sports Epreneur platform. Hello, everybody. It's Jacob Newton here again with another episode of the RAV podcast, Raw, Authentic, and Vulnerable. My name's uh, David Anderson, and uh, I'm from uh, Santa Rita, California. Um, you know, grew up there from the time I was 15 years old. Um, I am also a hockey player, so, you know, coming from California, uh, it's, you know, kind of a hard place to make your name, so leaving, I left at uh, 16 years old, and um, just kind of been traveling through Canada um, and through a couple different schools, and now, right now, I'm in going to school, last year's school at UNLV, and, um, you know, we have a good team, but um, mainly, you know, I had I had a really great support system growing up through the fact that they were allowed to, um, you know, really be able financially and mentally to really do everything that they could for me. And, um, you know, just that stereotypical kind of life where, you know, nothing's wrong, everything was great. And then, boom, when I was about, you know, uh, I would say – I was 19 years old. So my, this relates a lot to hockey as well. Um, hockey's everything to me, like without hockey, like I don't know if I would have been able to go to school just to, you know, learn school. I needed that outlet. Um, so when I was 19, um, I, I figured out like over in the summers that uh, my mother was actually an alcoholic. And, um, I, I didn't really know any of this in literally until that summer. Um, I was, you know, kind of just going, going to a workout, saw a water bottle and it was really wine. So, you know, it was, uh, it was a big, big time wake up call for me. Um, you know, because not that I grew up sheltered, but I grew up with this whole mind that, you know, my family is, you know, like the best family ever like we don't have any of that stupid stuff going wrong going wrong in our family um but uh basically it turned to you know you you know like once you find one clue of an alcoholic or you know drug addict it kind of just continues on and continues on and continues on and she's just you know being an alcoholic she was very untruthful i learned um you know after her passing that you know she had a lot of you know mental health issues uh she was hurt uh by her real dad and her stepdad at a very young age and um you know she she put up the best fight that she could but you know at the end of the day when you do something like that for so long and, you know, with that being said, like my, my childhood, like I had, like she was completely a hundred percent clean. Mm. So the, the, the biggest thing that was hard for me and thinking like when this originally all happened, like what if I never left home, mm. you know? So what if I never, you know, decided to leave at 16 because I was the youngest, uh, I was the youngest and, you know, she, she, we had such a close relationship. She was like, she would volunteer at my school just to, you know, do be there just to see me for an hour, you know? So she, she really, we had a really tight knit relationship and it was something that it was very hard to get through. And really, I would say, better half of three years really affected the one thing that I truly care about, which is hockey, mm. you know, and, and it was, it was something that like, 
I I don't know. Like I went, I went to counseling. Like, I don't know, like, you know, usually over the grieving process and it's just something that, you know, I, I just, I felt like it was more something that I needed to move on myself and kind of, it just, it just, maybe it was the person, you know, I don't, I don't know. I just didn't have a very good experience with that. So my, my ultimate goal was, you know, making sure, you know, my sister and I, we wanted to make sure that she wasn't just, uh, you know, someone that, you know, died from alcoholism. So, you know, we wanted to make sure that, uh, she, uh, she had memory. So we donated, uh, all of her, uh, well, she couldn't, a lot of her insides were damaged from alcoholism. Um, but we donated her corneas to charity and that's how kind of we celebrate her life every year. Okay. So it's, it it's kind of turned into a huge positive for my family and I, but you know, it was just, it's something that, you know, mental health can is comes in many different forms. Right. And um, I think that's like really the bottom line is like growing up, nothing was wrong with me. No anxiety, no depression, no, you know, no, no nothing. But in reality, like mental health is a huge thing. And, you know, I feel like we're doing something so little about it. Because, you know, with podcasts like yours, you know, like we're able to like branch out and talk about it while I feel like we're still in that like 80s, 90s mindset where it's like, oh, you you need to be tough. Mm. But, you know, at the end of the day, like doing stuff like this or, you know, having your own ways of going about it is how, you know, you really get through that, that right a hundred percent and you know you have to find something you love first and then and then work from there right and and so when you have this uh you know when you think about your mom you think about her mm-hmm. life when you uh you, you know you could sit there and you could maybe be resentful have, have mm-hmm. some type of anger towards her knowing that you know she was an alcoholic but now having the knowledge that you have in terms of the things that she experienced as a child mm-hmm. um you know physical abuse whatever it was like you said from her biological father from her stepfather um and through that it created the alcoholic that she wound up becoming not because she wanted to you know Mm -hmm. nobody wants to become an alcoholic nobody wants to die from drinking so much beer or whatever the case is it's a Mm -hmm. simple fact that people's mental health are low and that's their coping mechanism you know and so that was obviously hers that was something that i used for many many years of my life um and so yeah when you when you think about your mom what what kind of comes up is it is it resentment or is it anger or is it empathy and compassion again knowing what she went through in her her childhood um, it it was originally a lot of anger because you know i was always like well why like that was my big thing in my head was why why like, why did it have to be now you know because you know in the hockey world your 19 20 year of juniors pretty crucial and that's kind of like where I was so that I could go to college, you know, and, um, but you know, now it, it like, and it sort of happened quickly. I would say, I would say within like a year, I kind of switched my mindset to like, she did so many amazing things for her family. There's really no reason, um, to have that anger you can be mad at the situation that occurred and you know, the, the why basically of, you know, why she started drinking, you can be upset about that because that's something that no matter first off is completely so wrong Mm. on all levels, you know, and you know, you just have to, you know, I felt, I started to feel bad for her because, you know, nowadays in 2020, obviously not right now being quarantined, but you know, uh, you have so many more outlets. Right. Uh, and you know, I just, it's unfortunate the fact that she couldn't get those same outlets. But with that being said, like 
I, I think I really try hard of thinking like, um, I would say like a couple of years past like her death because of the fact that I knew she was clean at that point. And so it, I like just try to think of the good memories that mm -hmm. we had as a family. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, every, every time I'm back home, I make sure to, you know, go to her grave site because that's something that's very important to me, very important to my girlfriend um, and my family. Yeah, for sure. I, I can, I can imagine that. And, um, how do you think it was for you? Like when you first, when, when everything first happened, when your mom first passed away, like what, what kind of maybe were some of the thoughts that you were experiencing some of the sadness? Um, because obviously you're not the only one in the world, right? That it has lost a mother. Uh, nobody wants uh, yeah. to experience that, you know, but obviously at some point that's what we're all going to kind of live with. Right. And mm -hmm. again, I would imagine that had a significant impact on your mental health and, like you said, you're in such a pivotal time in, in your playing career, uh, you know, where you're trying to look into the future in terms of colleges and what college to go to. And, you know, heck, just showing up to the rink the next day, um, knowing mm -hmm. that your mom had just passed away or whatever the case was. So maybe you could talk a little bit about where your mindset was yeah. after everything happened. Um, a lot of, so a lot of stuff from my family was very much hidden for me. I was, so some context there i was baby of the family of yeah. i have an older sister um so you know me i was like very much like sh sort of sheltered sort of got everything he wanted that type of stereotype kid yeah so when this all happened um you know i didn't i didn't really know what to do i was uh at the time playing in the maritime hockey league. So thousands and thousands of miles away from my family. Um, and really just had to just, at first I didn't tell anyone. My, my dad actually called coach and I didn't, I just didn't want to get bombarded with, Oh dude, you, are you okay? You know, like, yeah. because I wasn't, I wasn't okay. Of course. And, and, um, so I got the call, put it down and within probably about 48 hours, found out a lot of info. So like, I didn't know my mom had pre previous condition alcoholism. I did not know that. She, uh, she, uh, basically before I was born, my sister raised me while she was sort of getting help. And I didn't know that. Mm. And, um, and that sister we're, we're 11 years apart. So there's a huge age gap. Right. And, um, also on top of the fact, uh, we're technically half brother and half sister. Not that that changes anything for me mm -hmm. because she's still my sister. Right. But right after that, I was experiencing a lot of anger from my, from my mom to my dad to my sister because I felt like, well, what else is there to hide? You guys, you know, that was something in itself probably took me six months to get through. Oh. And just – just trying to heal with that because of the fact that it was like, it felt like a lot of betrayal on my family. Like to me, like, how can you not tell me, Hey, sit me down when I'm like, I don't know, 18 years old when I'm like technically a man. Right. And, and just be like, Hey, you know, this happened, this happened, this happened. It's not current conditions right now, but just sort of aware. Yeah. Because, you know, what happens, you know, got like, obviously the addictive trait is in my family. What if when I was 16 years old, I got addicted to cigarettes or something, you know, yeah. like, and now that me knowing about this, I've been a lot more cautious of like drinking and, you know, you know, doing other things that, you know, not basically not making it a habit. Right. And right. that's, that's the most important thing. But yeah, I was very hurt for a very long time. Yeah, I can imagine. I think that's one thing that's unfortunate. You know, I'm, I'm a father myself. I got two kids and 
I just want to make sure that I lead by example for them. I always, I'm always truthful with them. Um, I always allow them to, to see my emotions, my thoughts, my feelings, things like that. I don't want to hide anything from them mm-hmm. in an attempt to save them, to coddle them, to, yeah. you know, protect them. But in the end, if a parent is out there not telling their kids certain things in an attempt to protect them, all that is actually happening is the parents just trying to protect themselves, you know? So mm-hmm. had you had all this information, uh, you know, maybe not right away when it was all happening, but, you know, shortly after, instead of them lying to you in an attempt to protect you, um, just telling you the truth, you're still going to have a reaction to it, right? But now here you are, your mom passes away, and then you're bombarded with all of this other information, right? So it almost kind of like suppresses the emotions you had about your mom passing away. And now you have anger in terms of all the things that were held from you, right? Mm-hmm. Opposed yeah, to just exactly. telling you then, Yes, you're still going to be sad or angry, but at least then your, your reaction is valid because you're reacting from a place of truth. You're dealing with truth mm-hmm. opposed to lies or um, deceit, uh, essentially, from not telling you, right? And I, and I know for myself, too, a lot of things uh, were held for me as a child. You know, I was sexually abused. Um, then I think through that, uh, my family members just kind of wanted to protect me, didn't want to put any more burden on me to make me feel X, Y, and Z, you know? So I would say the message for any parents out there is let's make sure we're always being truthful with our kids. Obviously let's be truthful with ourselves first, which is then going to allow us to be truthful with our kids. Um, so where, where would you say you're at now? You know, it's been a few years now since her passing. Are you, are you in a much better mental space now? Yeah. So through like the, I'll, I'll get into like the hockey side of things. So, I didn't play my 20 year old year. I went, I went to division three school uh, out East uh, in uh, Massachusetts called Nichols college. Okay. Nice. Uh, I went there for two years and um, that's, that's where really stuff started to hit hard for me. Um, I basically had a coaching staff that I thought believed in me, didn't believe in me because I'm a goaltender. So obviously like one guy gets in it, but you know, I felt like I wasn't really even given a fair shot at that mm. for basically two years. And, you know, once again, getting, I felt lied and deceited by the coaching staff. Um, so really those two years were the hardest two years I've ever had to get through in my entire life for the fact that one, I was dealing with my mom passing away and the one thing that I loved Mm. more than anything that I want to do for the rest of my life. I wasn't playing in any games. I was practicing, but practice is practice. Right. You want to, you want to feel that high intensity moment where the game's on the line and, you know, whatever the case may be like, you know, the biggest thing that I learned from all that is I don't need hockey to be happy. Mm-hmm. And I found I found I found that important is like that's where I started, you know, thinking of you know stuff after like I I never would have if I didn't have that those experiences I never would have thought hey I want to play pro for as long as I can and then become a coach because I wasn't into coaching at the time mm-hmm. but I saw how this program was, you know, not getting, I guess, best coach that they could have gotten. And me thinking, Oh, I know I could do better. If I have more experience in playing slash knowing how to just handle human beings better, I'm already light years ahead. So for me, it was a lot of reflection of what, well, I'm not playing for the two years that I'm here right now. Like what's, what's going to happen? Long story short, we won our conference here. It was a great to be a part of a team. I was a good teammate. And, um, uh, but that summer they committed a goalie and they, that would have been five goalies at camp. And I, I was like, you know what? I, I'm Okay. Yeah. So I've been, I was in uh, North Dakota for a year and a half where right then for me, I was like, I was a backup role, 
But the big thing for me was trying to see if I could play again. Because yeah. basically from the time I was 19, I was, you know, towards the end of my season. Mm. So I had probably played three games since my mother passed away. Yeah. So I was still in that recovery mode of like, well, you know, shit, can I do this? Like, right. can I play again? Like, is this something realistic for me? And, uh, and had an excellent year. I played 10 games, led the league in save percentage. And then I spent another half of the year there. Basically, you know, I would, in ACHA, you can come back for a fifth year. Okay. And their starter was going to come back for a fifth year. And uh, that was my plan all along was kind of go there for three years and then get like a, uh, you know, a graduate program there. Um, but that didn't end up working out. So, you know, and I have no hard feelings whatsoever because obviously now I'm in Vegas and I'm, and I played a lot this year. And the biggest, most important thing that, you know, it wasn't an easy process, right? But the, the cool, the cool thing is through, you know, a five year thing, I figured, I told my mind that it, I believed that I could still do it and uh, now I'm still doing it. So right. I feel like, feel like, you know, no matter what I accomplish in hockey, however many rings, a conference championship, nothing will outweigh the fact that I was able to basically in a five year ish time frame prove to myself, Hey, you can still do this. You can still play for top ranked team and be an impactful player like you used to be. Mm. And that, that was just something that, you know, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy what the mind can do and how, how your body can heal um, through time. And, you know, it's such a cliche, but anyone that's around me that I like that they've lost some, like a parent, you know, or, any anyone close to them the biggest thing i tell them it's time you just need time mm. and it's you know some people approach it differently but you know going to counseling doing that whole process and but you know for me i i feel like mentally i still deal with anxiety that's the something that i deal with you know sort of not every day um, but you know, probably one three times a week, I would say. Yeah. And um, and that was kind of like from from this whole circumstances over the past five years. Um, but I've learned basically, you just got to be in the moment and do things in the moment. Doing this podcast with you right now is what I'm focused on, and then worry about what I have to do the rest of my day. Right. And I think that's pretty uh, relatable to quarantine right now, you know, sort of having a schedule, being in the moment, not, you know, not being on your phone all day, not watching TV all day, but benefiting yourself as a human being and going for a walk, taking your dogs for walks, uh, you know, just doing cleaning your house, making it the best house you've ever seen, you know, just little things like that that are pretty important to um, humans, obviously, but you have so much time right now, you know, to get ahead, For sure. to get ahead. And, you know, that's something really important that, you know, people need to understand this is time to get ahead, not time to, you know, drink beers and be miserable. Right even more miserable than they already are. But it's not, you know, it's my belief. Some uh, lovely lady once told me that the more difficult your path, uh, the higher your purpose. Uh, so mm -hmm. I believe, you know, through all the, the tough things I've been through in my life, it was all for a reason. It was because it was going to allow me to continue going through hard times, uh, but to, to build strength from them and then also be a source of inspiration for other people, you know? So all the mm -hmm. difficult times you went through in terms of hockey, with going to Nichols and then going to North Dakota and then now being in Vegas. Well, you know, the hard time that you went through uh, with your mom passing kind of set you up, built, allowed you to build up that strength so that, 
you know, yeah, this stuff was tough, but yeah, you know, switching from this school to that isn't as tough as, you know, losing your mom at a young age, you know? So exactly. um, you could sit back and you can have some gratitude then for, for the tough times that you've been through in your life mm -hmm. and, um, and kind of just how you've handled it and how you've grown through it, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So I could, you know, say that for anybody listening, uh, when you, when you are going through the tough times to not get lost in that victim si uh, mindset of why me, uh, poor me, because the, the truth is, is why not you, you know, exactly. if, if not you, it's exactly. going to be somebody else, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so let's just take it and understand that life's trying to teach us something. Um, and for you and for many people out there, uh, in that moment, your greatest teacher was death. And unfortunately it was mm -hmm. the death of your mom, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I, you know, kudos to you, buddy, for continuing to push on. And it sounds like you've gotten yourself to a pretty good, uh, mental state, which with, uh, you know, a lot more room for growth as we all do. Uh, you know, it's going to be a lifelong process. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Frick, it's crazy. I've got another buddy that he's going to come on. He, he's playing currently professionally in Europe and, uh, I played with him in the USHL in Lincoln, um, in my first season there and his mom passed away that year. Um, and mm -hmm. I'll never forget that oh, and wow. kind of the, you know, what he was able to, to build, uh, through that. Um, so I'm certainly looking forward to it, um, to having him on as well. But I think, Again, just making sure that I'm not having, you know, only people that are dealing with anxiety or depression or alcoholism. Mm -hmm. You know, here you are. It's, it's another person that I've not had on the podcast in terms of, you know, another thing that affects our mental health. Somebody passing away in our family mm -hmm. affects our mental health, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I, uh, what, would, what would you, you know, for any advice, if you have any advice for anybody listening, what would it be of, you know, kind of how you were able to use that to your advantage and kind of how you were able to get through those times in your life? Yeah. Um, well, it's, it's a unique time and, you know, no matter divorce, um, you know, losing a child, uh, you know, th those type of things are ones that can even compare to losing your mother because of the fact like, you know, that, that stuff, serious stuff, you know, and I just feel that each day is a new day and that's how you have to approach it to be in, you know, basically everyday life, which is what I've learned through this, but um, every day is a new day and you have to make sure physically and mental health no, no matter what you do physically and mental health that those two things don't slide it, but especially your physical because of the fact that you know your mental is going to slide back mm. to being depressed to being anxiety to have all these emotions your mind's going to do that because you obviously lost someone so close to you mm. but the biggest thing is that you're finding something physically run working out CrossFit, whatever it is, you know, you're finding that thing that is your thing that you like to do. And then, and then finding an activity where, you know, you can just sit in your home and just start to think, you know, even if that means you take a 20 minute nap, you take a 20 minute nap. Like mm -hmm. it's big to just be able to be on your own and think and just think of everything around you think one how lucky am i like you know at the end of the day you're still breathing you're still you know following your hopes and your dreams to be you know what happened in the past it's something that you know i couldn't have controlled my mom going back to that you know at one point i always thought well what if i went home uh and it stayed home that still wouldn't have affected it she had she had a disease alcoholism little people little do people know like me being 19 i just thought alcoholism was just a oh you can get through it no it's like a legit disease and you know you get to really reflect on the fact of no matter what i did my my dad did my sister no matter what they all, both of them could have caused me less pain, but at the end of the day, no one would have been able to stop my mom right. from doing what she wanted to do. And knowing that in your heart and in your mind is really how I got through most days mm. is that 
you know, no matter what, circumstances happen for a reason. Whatever, whatever you believe in, whatever it is, uh, but everything happens for a reason in our lives. This was to test me, make me stronger, make me realize how much more I want to pursue hockey. That was my reason, but that affected my sister in very different ways where she just had her, you know, her third child, which was very difficult for her in the sense of not having her mother there for right. the first time, right. you know? So it's, it's affected, you know, my, my sister, my father and I all differently, but you know, we each found our ways to get through it. Obviously my opinion, you don't get through something like this. I feel like you just get it past that day yeah, and then you get past that day and then you get past that day. So that's how I've really approached it is just winning the day and doing everything you can to make sure mentally and physically that you're, you're tuned into what, whatever you are doing Boom. and being, and being focused. Right. Absolutely, man. Well, Frick, I think that could be a, a good, a good place to, to kind of wrap that up. Uh, sure. I have had a couple questions in mind. I got them and I think we've uh, gone a different little, you know, the, the conversation in, in these podcasts I'm finding, they kind of go all over the place or they take <laughs> certain turns and twists and things like that. But, um, but first and foremost, buddy, I just want to thank you so much for, for taking the time out of your day. Um, grateful for the experience and, and then obviously, you know, your willingness to share. Um, I believe obviously, like we've said, and like we know, there's many other people out there that have lost, you know, any family member, whether it be mom, dad, brother, sister, cousin, anything like that. It's, it's never easy. Um, so I believe through this podcast, there's going to be some people that are going to be able to relate with you um, mm -hmm. and, and use some of your insights in terms of how you were able to cope and, and deal with the passing of your mom and continuing to push on and not allowing, you know, that out external circumstance to, to define you and control your decision making, even though, of course, it was a struggle. Here you are today, you know, five years later and still pushing on and still doing the things that you love to do. Right. Of course. Exactly. You know, it's I don't I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Everything that I've been through, of course, I would want her back, but it's just made me that much mentally tougher. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and uh, real quick for, for anybody that would want to get a hold of you, if, you know, again, if somebody's listening to this and maybe their mom passed away, they need somebody to talk to. Maybe it just happened. Uh, would there be, you know, any way for people to get a hold of you if they, if they can? Yeah. Uh, on Instagram, uh, da.anderson30. Um, I am, you know, that would probably be the best way for people to contact me. Um, and, you know, it, again, I'm here to talk to anyone doesn't you know obviously doesn't have to just be a hockey player i'm open to all sorts of people whatever they're going through um yeah anything that they need absolutely awesome well again buddy thank you so much for your time truly truly appreciate you uh, and i wish you nothing but the best and a grateful day yeah thank you really appreciate all right, it all right take care all right Scott.